It's, um, it's a real pleasure uh, to be back uh, in India. I was just thinking that the first time I came here was uh, 40 years ago um, with, uh, with my family. I'm here now in a somewhat different circumstance, but it's wonderful uh, to be here. And I especially want to thank um, Prime Minister Ayesha Shankar, all of our colleagues uh, in government, and uh, some of the individuals I've had the opportunity to meet already today uh, for uh, an incredibly warm uh, welcome. Uh, the minister and I uh, have a partnership and, and friendship going back some years, and I have to say it's one of the particular pleasures of my job to be able to work with you uh, on, a, on a regular basis. Um, there are few relationships in the world that are more vital than the one between the United States uh, and India. We are uh, two of the world's leading democracies, and our diversity uh, fuels our national strength. Uh, we uh, are two of the world's largest economies, powered by the innovative spirit of our people. Uh, at a time of rising uh, temperatures and sea levels, we, two of the world's largest carbon emitters, are on the front lines of the climate crisis and the leading edge of a new green economy. Our countries know firsthand the lethal consequences of climate change. Uh, and the Indian and American people are united by millions of family ties, stretching back generations and by shared values and shared aspirations. Together, the actions of, uh, that India and the United States take are shaping the 21st century uh, and beyond. That's why strengthening the partnership uh, with India is one of the United States' top foreign policy priorities. That's been the case for the past several presidential uh, administrations, Democrat and Republican alike. And President Biden feels a deep personal commitment to making our friendship with India as strong and as effective uh, as it can be. We believe this partnership will be critical for delivering stability and prosperity uh, in the Indo-Pacific region and beyond, and for showing the world how democracies can deliver for their people. And we believe that there's a good deal that we can accomplish uh, together uh, on, uh, on so many fronts, including uh, in the near term. Uh, as the minister said, um, we discussed uh, a number of critical issues today, COVID-19 being at the top of the agenda. It's hit, hit both of our countries very, very hard. Uh, we remember with gratitude, and we will not soon forget, the aid and assistance that India provided to us in the early days of COVID-19 uh, when um, our hospitals were overwhelmed uh, early in the, uh, in the pandemic. Uh, and I'm proud that we could help return uh, the gesture uh, of friendship. Over the past few months, uh, the United States government has contributed more than $200 million to uh, India for COVID-19 relief. Um, and there's been a huge outpouring from individual Americans, from the private sector, uh, in support as well. Uh, today, I'm pleased to announce that the United States government will send an additional $25 million to support vaccination efforts uh, across India. This funding will uh, contribute, I think, to saving lives by strengthening vaccine supply chain logistics, uh, addressing uh, misinformation and vaccine hesitancy, and helping to train uh, more healthcare workers. We're determined to end this pandemic, and India and the United States will work together uh, to do it, including through the Quad Vaccine uh, Partnership, which will bring safe and effective vaccines to others across uh, the region. Um, and I believe, too, that as we uh, move forward, India and the United States together uh, around the world uh, will be leaders in bringing this pandemic uh, to an end and, I hope, setting up uh, an even stronger global health security system uh, going forward so that uh, we're in a better position should the next pandemic uh, come around. Uh, we also have to address the very painful secondary consequences of the pandemic to fuel our economic recovery. India and the United States must continue to grow our trade relationship. And beyond that, we have to keep working through the barriers that stand in the way of greater bilateral investment and deeper commercial ties. That's something we talked about uh, today as well. If we create the right conditions for more trade and investment and innovation, there really is no limit to uh, what our private sectors can achieve together. Uh, the minister and I also discussed strengthening our regional cooperation both bilaterally and uh, through the Quad with Japan and Australia, as well as other multilateral partnerships. So much of the future of the 21st century uh, will be written in, the, in this part of the world. Uh, we share a vision, India and the United States, of a free, open, secure, and prosperous Indo-Pacific. 
We'll work together to make that vision a reality. Uh, and we'll continue to advance peace, security, and development worldwide and to work in international organizations to strengthen a rules-based international order. Uh, just to come back to, to one example, uh, the Quad countries, as uh, the Minister noted, are focused together on uh, dealing effectively with COVID-19, on advancing uh, the climate agenda, on dealing with um, emerging technologies. And we're bringing our experts together on a number of other vitally important issues to this region and beyond, including infrastructure, supply chains, maritime security. Uh, we discussed regional security issues, as the minister noted, uh, including Afghanistan. Uh, India and the United States share a strong interest in a peaceful, secure, and stable Afghanistan. As a leader and critical partner in the region, India has made and will continue to make vital contributions to Afghanistan's stability and development and will continue to work together to sustain the gains of the Afghan people and support regional stability after the withdrawal of coalition forces uh, from the country. Uh, and indeed, we talked about uh, the climate crisis as well. Earlier this year, we launched the U.S.-India Climate uh, and Clean Energy Agenda 2030 partnership to help achieve our ambitious 2030 uh, targets for the United States, slashing greenhouse gas emissions in half, for India, installing 450 gigawatts of renewal, renewable energy capacity, among other targets. That's nearly twice the amount of renewable energy capacity that the entire world added in 2020. It would demonstrate to emerging economies that economic development and a cleaner economy go hand in hand. Uh, today's conversations, including uh, my meeting earlier today with National Security Advisor Doval and my meeting later today with Prime Minister Modi, are valuable, important opportunities to carry our cooperation forward. Uh, Defense Secretary Austin and I are looking forward to hosting uh, Minister Rajshankar and Defense Minister Singh later this year in Washington for the annual 2 plus 2 dialogue. That's a critical forum for our two countries to deepen our strategic and security partnership. Finally, our, our bilateral relationship is strengthened by our shared values. As two of the world's leading democracies, we take seriously our responsibility to deliver freedom, equality, and opportunity to all of our people. And we know that we must constantly do more on these fronts. Uh, neither of us has achieved uh, the ideals that we set for ourselves. Part of the promise of democracy is the constant striving uh, for better, uh, as America's founders put it, to form a more perfect union.